Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Last week I reviewed my newest Parker Duofold clone, the Jinhao Centennial. This pen is a real winner and rivals my previous favorite Duofold clone, the Moonman M600S. In the same order in which I received the Centennial, I also purchased this Jinhao 997. I had not seen the 997 model before and it intrigued me for its resemblance to the Parker Premier and how the Parker Premier itself is an evolution of the Parker 75. I'm not that fond of slimmer style metal pens like the Parker Sonnet, but this pen has grown on me. Plus it affords me the opportunity to delve into fountain pen history, specifically Parker's design history. So join me in a short fountain pen history lesson, as well as looking at this Jinhao inspired by the Parker Premier right now. And we have two pens in their condoms. And they're both Jin Hao's. And here's the other pen. This is a new model, as far as I know, from Jin Hao. It is the 997, I think. Yeah, there it is there. 997. Get all these numbers straight. And I was intrigued by the uh, slate gray or dark pewter gray of this uh, finish and uh, it's very sparkly it's much more sparkly than it looked in the pictures very interesting sleek redesigned Parker arrow very nice finials that match and it's a pop top and the reason that I, I generally don't buy metallic pens because they tend to come with metallic sections or chrome sections but this one has a bit of a finish on it so well it's a little bit more slick than plastic it's not as slick as metal and that's a number five Jinhao nib I was unsure whether that was going to be a five or a six and a cartridge as well so a fairly interesting pen that posts very nicely well this will be interesting to compare it to some other pens that I have. So we will clean this one out as well and do a separate review on the Jinhao 997. So what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and some measurements and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. I'm also going to look at how this Jinhao 997 is inspired by the Parker Premier. This is a clone of the Premier, like this Jinhao Centennial it is a clone of the Parker Duofold. Actually, you can argue that this Centennial isn't actually a clone of the mid 90s Parker Centennial either, as it borrows the clip from the original Duofold where the Centennial had the arrow clip. Of course, then you can also argue that this 997 isn't a clone of the Premier because the clip and the section are different. You know, like this Platinum President isn't a clone of the Mont Blanc 146, he said tongue firmly in cheek. That's a joke, boy. You missed it. Went right past you. You gotta keep, I say you gotta keep on your toes. But toes, that is. But the fast ones get right by you. Keep your ears open. But yappity, yappity, yep. I can't get a word in edgeways. The Parker Premier is an evolution from previous Parker models, especially the Parker 75. This newest Premier was introduced in 2009, but it should have been named the Premier Mark III, as there were two previous premieres before this premiere premiered. Piper Parabu and Polly Perrette need to push back the pitch on the Princess and the Pauper project. But this Jinhao 997 borrows many Parker elements from a number of different models, starting with the Parker 75. The Parker 75 was designed by both Kenneth Parker and Don Doman, who also designed the Parker 45. 
Here is a Parker 45 from the 1960s. The Parker 75 was named because it was developed the year of Parker's 75th anniversary in 1963. The Parker 45, released in 1960, had done well in the low-priced pen range, but even though it was very successful, there wasn't a lot of margin for Parker. Kenneth Parker wanted more of a share of the high-end gift pen market, and he and Doman designed the Parker 75 to fill that role. They designed a new conformed grip section adapted from the Parker VP, which stood for very personal. And that grip was slightly triangular with grooves to help for multiple grip styles. They took the filling system from the new Parker 45, which introduced the ability to remove the converter and use ink cartridges, like a Colt 45 handgun uses shells. And the initial finish was in silver with a pattern inspired by some would say copied from, maybe, Kenneth Parker's silver cigarette case made by a London silversmith and dubbed Sicily, which is French for chiseled. The silver was cut with fine lines with grooves filled with dark stain to accentuate the texture. This Sicily finish was added to many more Parker models in the future. The Parker 75 model, even though it was considered a high-end fountain pen, actually became more successful as the years progressed. Parker sold over 11 million Parker 75s in the 15 years of its production, which ended in 1994 when it was replaced by the Parker Sonnet. Introduced in 2009, the new Premier strongly resembles the late model Parker 75 from the outside, and the funky groove section was replaced with a slick metal tapered section instead and added a threaded cap as well. The Premier, with its 18 karat gold nib, weighs in at a whopping 45 grams and retails for around $250 US. Let's look at the Jinhao 997 now and I'll reference these design elements as we go. From the top, we have a triple tiered tapering gold metal finial that has a circular divot on the very top and is a dead ringer for the finial on the late model Parker 75. Then we have the classic Parker arrow clip, which Jinhao has elected to stylize rather than do a direct copy with these smooth edges and very lightly engraved lines to just hint at the fletching of the arrow. The clip is very springy and very usable. The cap and barrel are made of a finely textured gunmetal gray enamel applied over brass. This makes this pen on the heavy side for a slim pen on the small side. But we'll get to balance in a moment. The cap tapers up to a wide gold metal band which has Jinhao engraved on one side in a cross hatched block letter and 997 engraved on the back. There is a small step down to the barrel which tapers all the way down to a mirror image gold metal end tassy which does not have a divot in the end but is flat on the bottom. The overall symmetry of this pen is very pleasing to the eye. Plus this slightly textured gunmetal gray body and gold hardware makes this a very handsome pen indeed. The cap snaps off to reveal a long black plastic tapering section with three circle grooves and a gold ring towards the steel nib. This is where the 997 deviates from the design of the Premier in that the Premier has a threaded cap and a shiny metal section. Let's get a closer look at this number five size steel nib. It is a nice looking two-tone nib with the Jinhao Chariot, Jinhao, and F for fine engraved on it. And there is the plastic feed. The inside of the cap has a black plastic cap sleeve, which incorporates the snap closure against the gold ring at the top of the section to keep the nib sealed. The section unscrews to reveal an included Jinhao branded standard international 
cartridge converter. There's the Jinhao brand. And the pen will accept standard international cartridges and you can slip another one into the barrel so you can carry two cartridges with you piggybacked. And while we got the barrel off you can see that we've got metal threads against metal threads. Very solid construction. The cap posts deeply and securely and slightly back weights the pen unless you shift your grip up slightly and then it's very comfortable. The section is long enough and this step down from the barrel to the section is smooth enough to allow you to grip it anywhere in comfort. This is very nice both posted and unposted. I have to say however that the Sonnet is the champ at posting and balance. It posts much deeper and with a much smoother line and better balance than the 997. However the Parker 45 is a killer poster. Just like its cousin the Parker 51. Here's a Parker 51 from 1954 which also posts like a champ. But the Parker 45 is just really sleek in the hand and very light. This pen retails for, wait for it, wait for it, seven dollars and forty-six cents U.S. and is available in nine different color hardware combinations: red, black, matte black, gold, and gray. And the red, black, matte black, and gray are available with Chrome hardware. You can get all five of the gold hardware pens for $25 US and all nine finished combinations for $43 US. Of course that would be a waste of good money if the pen wrote like crap now wouldn't it? Holy crap! <laughs> Holy crap and crap! Holy crap! So does this pen write like crap? We shall find out shortly. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Jinhao 997 with a Parker Sonnet, a Parker 45, a Faber-Castell Loom, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The 45 is the best poster of the bunch, but all these pens post really nicely. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. <music> And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Jinhao nine nine seven and it is a number five size fine steel nib. And the ink today is J. Urban Stormy Gray. Stormy? This is Michael Cohen. Are you alone? Yes. And what are you wearing? <laughs> Here is the swatch for the J. Urban Stormy Gray. I'm really liking this color. It's not black and it's got this gold fleck to it. I'm not sure whether the camera is picking that up or not, but it is very nice. Uh, of course with a fine nib like this it doesn't show up that well, but at my angle right now I'm getting some gold pickup sparkle right in these numbers right there. And here is Mont Blanc Oyster Grey and Hiroshizuku Take Sumi. Let's check the wetness on this pen. As you can see, it is very wet. 
and it's right out of the box like that so and it's very smooth right out of the box in all directions. As to line variation, it is very stiff. So I wouldn't even try it. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out as 0.5 millimeters, which is a Western fine and a Japanese fine to medium. And for our writing sample, and for some reverse writing, And actually it does it very well it's very thin line and it gets very dry and I think it might actually run out yeah it's running out and for some quick writing as you can see that feed has no difficulty keeping up so what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? Well, I like almost everything about this fountain pen, but I especially like the price. This pen is only $8. Holy schmeck, that's a deal. It's for 99 bucks. Take me to jail. If it wrote like an $8 pen, then I'd just say, meh, it's a cheap pen. But this pen writes nicely. Now, this isn't going to be my go-to pen when I have an Opus 88, Bella, uh, Leonardo, Momento Zero, and um, Leonardo Furore Grande to choose from, but eight bucks. <laughs> Holy crap, that's good. <laughs> now, not only does it write decently, but it's really well built. There are no flaws. The finish is terrific. The balance of the pen is nice, and the overall aesthetic is very pleasing. Getting all five color variations for the price of an Amazon Basics or even a Pilot Metropolitan, which, sorry Metro fans, is very uncomfortable in my grip. Stinking piece of Japanese crap. Now, this has to be the bargain of the season. So what do I not like about it? Well, it is a very fine line. And that might be great for some, uh, but not for me. And it is a very small nib, this five, number five. And the section is slightly thin for my grip. And it weighs in on the heavy side. Uh, so I wouldn't write with this for any long periods of time. But I was actually surprised by the weigh-in on this pen at 36 grams, as it doesn't actually feel that heavy. I think that's because of how well the weight is distributed across this pen. And it's a good thing that this nib comes out very easily. There's no collar assembly to unscrew, but the nib and the feed are friction fit and just slide out for cleaning or swapping. Jinhao nibs are readily available, so if you need a medium, you can swap one in. This is also a standard number five size, so any standard number five might fit your pen. I don't have either a Jinhao X450 or an X750 to show you right now as I gave them away as gifts. But those models are in the same price range of about six or seven bucks US and have a number six size nib and they're available in medium if you prefer those sizes. However, this 997 feels even more luxurious than either of those pens in my memory, of course. As always, your mileage may vary. 
But if you want to give out a well-built quality fountain pen for a little money that just writes, you can get five of them in the different colors for only five bucks a piece. That's quite a bargain of a stocking stuffer. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.